A hundred years ago, some women, uh, you know, fought for the right to vote. Not, you know, then another 10 years later, all women got the rights to vote. And then we had a reduction in the voting age. Um, but we have a long way to go before we get full representation in Parliament. And also before we get full representation of women in all strands of society. It, it, it is all about, about choices, though, isn't it? Being able to do what you want to do, not being limited by your class or, or, indeed, or indeed by your gender. Um, so so what, what is your view on the, on the grid girl controversy, 100 years on um, from those first votes for women? I mean, shouldn't those women be allowed to choose the clothes they wear without censorious finger-wagging from the left? I mean, it's a decision that, that Formula One took in regards to whether they think it's appropriate in this day and age. I mean, my issue was really around uh, the President's Club and those young girls and women who were attending were not attending there for to be the plaything of the men who were there. And that was my issue. And what I also found disappointing was that when Labour introduced the Equality Act 2010, we had Section 40 in there, which is a clause to say that if uh, an employer knows that there's risk of women going into a place and it makes it unsafe for them, that they can be held liable and accountable. And it was a coalition government that removed that clause. And I'm fighting tooth and nail to get this government to reinstate that clause because that protects women and vulnerable people who are working. But, but do you see the, 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 the controversy around the, the grid girls and the controversy of, of, about those women who are, you know, abused at the President's Club? Let's call it what it is. Mm -hmm. Do you see that as of a piece? I mean, the point that some people have made this week, including amongst them Julia Hartley Brewer, is that the, the left will defend to the death the, the right of a woman uh, to wear a burqa. But if she chooses to wear a rather more revealing outfit, she's a, she's a victim who must be protected from herself. No, not at all. I don't think anybody's arguing that at all. We're, we argue that women can wear whatever they choose to wear, whatever they feel comfortable in wearing. I mean, uh, you know, what I could... girls are could... doing, though? That's, that's, that's the argument that they make. Yeah, but I'm, I mean, I'm fine with that, and mm -hmm. we're fine with whatever they want to wear. The issue is whether they're being, as you say, abused or not, whether they're being exploited and abused. They can do a job that they choose to do. That's fine. No one's got a problem with that at all. But it's where it's being exploited uh, that's the issue, not what they wear. Women can wear what they want to wear as long as nobody's telling them what they should wear. So if you turn up to work and they say, you have to wear this little black dress, matching knickers and high heels, that is an abuse well, of power. Isn't, isn't that but you what the girls are being asked, though? Because they, they are being told. They, are, they don't select their own clothes, as it were. There is an outfit, there is a uniform, and it's a pretty skimpy one at that. But if they're choosing to wear it, if that's their, if that's their decision, and they, you know, they walk out of the house with this is what they want to wear, that's the right of the woman to wear what she wants to wear. If you're being told you can only wear this and you don't want to, or you were not aware that that was going to be the dress code, there's a problem. And we had legislation, that's the thing that gets me, we had legislation that dealt with this. The coalition government decided to remove it. For what reason? What possible reason? Indeed. I, I mean, another area in which you're adamant that choice is central is around transgender issues. I mean, you, you're of the opinion that all female shortlists should be open to, to all self-identifying women. Why is that? Because the Labour Party has uh, all women shortlists. We're the only party to use all women shortlists. We made sure that the Act was amended so that we can uh, implement this, so that we can see a change in Parliament. And we've seen a phenomenal change of the structure and the makeup of Parliament because of all women shortlists. And uh, it's open to all women. I understand that you, like many other people, are happy to, to treat someone as a woman if they, if they so identify. But why shouldn't there be, as some people within the Labour Party have, have suggested, some women have suggested, why shouldn't there be at least a legal a requirement that their legal gender be female? Look, all, it's, we're all women shortlists are open to all women, and that includes uh, trans women as well. I mean, it's really quite... As simple as that, to be honest. But you don't see that you don't see the, the argument that it's made by some that actually, if you if you, you the, the the simple self identification, fine, but the requirement of having your, your legal gender as being female to, to have a place on these shortlists and there's competition for places on these shortlists, huge yeah. competition. Yeah, there are, and I think this stems from the Gender Recognition Act and the fact that uh, there's supposed to be an amendment to the Act, which we're still waiting for the government to start the consultation and have a talk about what needs to be 
amended, how we modernise the language and all of that stuff. That is very different from uh, All Women Shortlist. There's talk of, you know, other things around safe spaces uh, for women. There's, there's lots of different areas that need to be discussed and ironed out. But, you know, our policy is quite clear and it's, and it's been clear from the very beginning, to be honest. I mean, we don't... Uh, it's not something that's really uh, been a huge issue. And we've had all women shortlist for decades now. You, 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 you said in the past that you, you don't think that Theresa May is a, is a feminist. Do you think that there are any Conservatives that could be called feminist? Oh, yeah, of course, there are. Um, and the reason why... N I, name I, I, me, name me some, name I'll, me some. <laughs> I'll qualify the reason why I said Theresa May is not a feminist. Because I've seen... 86% of this government's cuts fall on the shoulders of women. I've seen women refugees uh, close down because of lack of funding. I've seen, uh, I've seen areas where women were making progress now being held back because of Theresa May's government. So it's not just enough to be a woman, you know, you also have to be, and, and to call yourself a feminist, you also have to, you know, help progress the movement, take the next steps in regards to uh, women's rights and women's equality. Let, let's talk about what could potentially be a, ver a very big next step for, for the Labour Party. Baroness Chakrabarty said this just a, just a few months ago regarding the leadership. As far as I'm concerned, next time it's a woman, my very strong preference is that the Labour Party should say to itself, it's time we had a woman after Corbyn. As we head towards the centenary, of some women getting the vote. Would you agree with that? I'd love to see a, a, a woman leader of the Labour Party. I mean, we did have a woman leader of the Labour Party. Um, we haven't had a woman prime minister. I mean, more importantly, I want to see a Labour government, and I want to see a Labour government as soon as possible because the damage that this Conservative government's doing to the country uh, is sometimes feels like it's going to be, you know, uh, take a lot of work and effort to undo the damage. But don't, don't, wouldn't you concede that, that, as things stand, the Labour Party itself has some, has some very real problems with, with, with sexism? Claire Colbert resigning as Labour leader of Haringey Council last week, uh, this week, I should say, citing sexism and bullying. I mean, what's the party doing about that? So, I mean, Claire has done a phenomenal job in Harrogate. She turned around the council. Is, is the party, it, is the party going, investigating what happened at Harrogate? It, I think it's important that, you know, I praise the work that, that Claire has done, you know. Um, it's important that I do that. Uh, any issues of sexual harassment, racism, bullying, the Labour Party has firm, robust policies. And it's important that anybody that feels they've been discriminated against in any way reports it so they can go through the structure so that it can be well, dealt she with she stepped, she stepped, in the, in the right, the leader of the right Council. proper way. So, so why, why is the party not investigating this? No, if, if there's an investigation, I don't know whether Claire has reported an investigation of sexual harassment or bullying. I hope that she has, because I think it's important, because if, if she is being sexually harassed or bullied, we have to root those people out. And Jeremy said time and time again, there's no place in the Labour Party and in his party for anybody that harasses anybody for any reason whatsoever. So if she is, you know... She needs to report it and it needs to be dealt with. And I, for one, will be ensuring that it's dealt with um, properly because we have robust policies to make sure that this happens. It's, I mean, it's not just, it's not just you know, Labour women who are barracked at public meetings. I mean, what did you make of the way in which Jacob Rees-Mogg was targeted by self-confessed supporters of, Je of Jeremy Corbyn? I mean, do you see any link between what happened there and you know, John McDonnell's repeating of those colleagues' comments about lynching Esther McVeigh, calling for direct action against all Tory MPs? I mean, Jacob Rees-Mogg, uh, you know, loves free speech. He promotes free speech all Don't the time. You? And, yeah, I do as well. And so he, you know, he went up to to talk to these people. And, I, and I've seen quite a number of videos from different angles, and they seem to be having a conversation be, before somebody came from behind Jacob Rees-Mogg in a white shirt and attacked a, a woman, which I found uh, very strange and unsavoury um, and wrong. I think the important thing here is the abuse that politicians um, receive. Free speech is one thing. You know, having a disagreement with people is another thing. You know, that is fine. But when it comes to abuse, it's a real issue. I mean, I found out this week that in my office, my office manager now says that he's the only one who will open the mail because we get abuse coming through and that he doesn't want any of our interns or anyone else to read it. And I just think we do have to tackle this issue of, um, of abuse.